Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you guys everything that I've been working on in the month of November. So I did get a week off from school this month for Thanksgiving, so I ended up getting a lot done, which is really exciting. But of course now I'm going into finals week. I think finals start on December 11th, but after that I'm going to have, I think, a full four weeks off of school. So there will be a lot of knitting in December and January as well. So let's get started. Um, I think when I last talked to you, I was working on this sweater and I finished it. Uh, I had wanted to do it for October for uh, Halloween, but then I just didn't get it finished in time. Um, but I am kind of happy and kind of disappointed in how it turned out. I've worn it, it's comfortable, but it's not my favorite sweater. So some things that I don't love about it, I feel like the neck is a little bit it's not constricting, but it's very like close crew neck. It's a lot tighter than I normally wear my sweaters. Um, so that's, I don't love that about it. And then the other thing that's kind of weird is I just don't love the proportions. So I moved, I think 10 or 11, no, I think I moved 12 stitches from the body into the arm. So 12 stitches into this arm and then another 12 stitches into this arm because I felt like there weren't enough stitches on the arm for me. Um, so the body is 24 stitches smaller than it should have been according to the pattern. And still I find the body really loose and baggy and the sleeves a little on the, not tight, but like fitted side. I like how the sleeves fit really well, but I wish the body was a little bit smaller. So the yarn that I used for this one, I had shown in last month's video, but it's the Drops Soft Tweed. Um, so I used the color Peppercorn for the main body and Carrot Cake for the color work up here. I really like the Tweedy effect. At first when I was doing it, I thought it looked like dryer lint, but um, I, I really like how it turned out. I like the speckliness of it. Um, it feels like it has a lot of texture and stuff like that like that. So I definitely will wear this sweater, don't get me wrong. Um, there's just a couple of things about it that like aren't my ideal. And then I finished one other sweater this month, um, and that is this one. So this one is the, I believe it's a summer tweed v-neck is the name of the pattern, and it's a free pattern, which is really nice. Uh, the other pattern is free as well. So both of these were free patterns. And so for this one, I used the Malabrigo Rios yarn, which is like a worsted weight uh, super wash yarn. And this is in the colorway Siri, S-I-R-I. -I. So <sighs> this sweater, I didn't love this yarn as much knit up as I thought I was going to. I feel like the little like speckles are too close together. I wouldn't, I kind of wanted that a more spread out, more, more dispersed. Uh, and then I did have an error on this, not really an error, but like uh, my bad is at the bottom of the sweater, I decided I didn't uh, I had alternated the skeins all the way down to here and then I was like, oh, I just have a little bit left to knit. I'm not going to worry about alternating deep skeins because it's not that much. But I think after I block it, I can really tell down here on the last sort of like four inches of the sweater that it's a different color. And so I'm back and forth on whether or not I should rip this out and re-knit the bottom. Uh, obviously, it's a top-down sweater, so it would be really easy to knit out to replace the bottom. Like, I don't have to to go very far to get to it. But like I said, like the yarn isn't my favorite in this one, the yarn colors. So I don't know if it's worth re-knitting it to me because even if I do that, it's still not a sweater that I'm gonna reach for super frequently. So I did do some modifications to the pattern. The pattern just had you, it was really bizarre. So you, you make this V-neck and then at the end of it, you pick up all the stitches again, but then you just do two rows and stock it in and then bind off again, which seems like not very nice finish to me. It would sort of give you like a rolled finish. So I decided to do just a ribbed v-neck instead and I used a tutorial on YouTube from Coco Knits and I'll try to link it down in the description box below if you're looking for that. Um, and it was how to do like this sort of like mitered corner v and it worked out really really well. I really like how this looks. I think it looks very clean. Um, I also say the sweater fits a lot closer than all of the sweaters I've made previously. Um, much closer to my normal measurements. I still don't think there's any negatives in it, um, but it definitely is a lot more tighter fitting and I really like how that looks. So I, I will keep that in mind for the last Malabrigo sweater that I have to make um, because I do think that's kind of comfortable and it's nice in this 
um, superwash merino that is very, you know, next to skin soft. So it doesn't really, I don't really have to have anything underneath it. Um, so it's kind of nice. So that was the other sweater that I had made this month. Then I decided to work on some Christmas socks. So uh, this is, I think this pattern is called Forest Spell. Uh, this is on the Drops website. This is another free pattern. So I guess I've done a lot of free patterns this month. Um, but these are little Christmas socks and I've knitted them in Drops Nord, N-O-R-D, in the colorway beige and then like forest green, I think. But I really like this. It has some little colorwork trees up at the top here and then colorwork again on the toe before switching back into that contrast toe. So this was a new to me sock style. Uh, all the ones I've done before used afterthought heels. Um, this one was knitted cuff down, so from the top to the toe. Uh, and you sort of like make a heel flap and then do some decreases on that heel flap and then pick up again along the sides um, and do some decreases as you make that like arch of the foot. So it was really interesting uh, construction wise to see how that heel was made. I was thinking I wouldn't like it that like where where I picked up the stitches are, is a little bit bulky because you have that like edge stitch on the inside, but it doesn't seem to bother me when I'm wearing shoes. I wore these with my, my big, you know, shoeling lined boots and it didn't seem to bother me at all. Um, and the other thing is I just went ahead and did the like as the pattern stated, that like roundish toe. Um, in the other socks I've made, I've tried to do sort of like an asymmetrical toe that more closely matches my foot anatomy. But I find that it's really annoying to have to like figure out which foot goes, which sock goes on which foot. Like having a left and a right sock is kind of annoying. So I decided to just try this one with a rounded toe. And it, um, so I've worn these and haven't washed them yet. And I can see that I am pushing out a little bit on the on one side where my big toe sits. But so it means these probably won't last as long, but I think I'm okay with that. So in terms of sizing for this, uh, they had three sizes and I believe they were made based on like European shoe sizes. So I picked the largest size that they had in the pattern, which I think was a 41 to 43. Personally, my feet are large. They are, I think, a 41 and a half in European sizes. So it should have fit me. Um, but as I was making it, I decided that, that the length of the foot was just going to be too, too long for me. So I did cut the length of the foot down, but everything else I used that large size pattern. But when I was doing the foot, instead of knitting, I think it's 19 centimeters, I only knit to 14 and a half centimeters before I went into this, this color work section. But I really, really love the fit on these. I was worried they were going to be a bit big on me because you, I cast on like 80 stitches for the calf. And normally I, my socks are like a 60 stitch. Um, but I think that the reason why you had extra stitches is because obviously this is strand and color work and the strand of color work doesn't stretch at all. So you need to be able to get, you know, your ankle and your foot through this. Uh, and I think that's why it's so large up here. But it does fit up high over my calf. So it doesn't seem to like slouch down or anything like that. So for the top, I didn't bother catching any of my floats because I figured like when I'm putting the sock on, I can sort of like bend it out of the way like this. And so I don't have to worry about snagging myself on it. Uh, for the color work around the toe, I definitely caught my floats every like two stitches because that's one where like the toes could easily get stuck in there and it's, it's not as easy to like see down in the toe. You can't really like, figure that out. So um, I like, I prefer the look of something like this where the floats aren't caught as frequently. I think it, it lays a little bit smoother. I think catching floats disrupts the like stitch evenness, at least at my skill level, but that's that. So these are the forced spell socks, again, free pattern. So after I finished these socks, I was sort of like, I felt like I had my sock mojo because I did these in like four days, so two days for each sock. It went really, really fast and I really liked the results. So I figured I'd go back to that broken seed stitch sock that I've only made one of so far. Um, so I worked on it for a day and it just was, I just don't like doing this one. I think, I, at first I thought it was that I don't like making socks. I think it's that I don't like doing broken seed stitch. It's very, very time consuming. So this is as far as I got in a single day. Um, and I said, so I decided what I'm gonna do is in between each project that I finish, I'll spend one day on this. Um, that way I'm still having some forward momentum, but that I don't have to commit to like working this sock for too long. 
Um, it's just one day and I can do that for one day. So that's as far as that one got. Eventually I will have a pair and it won't be that long, I don't think, but it's going. And, and then the last thing that I knit this month, um, so this is a Siamese cat and the pattern designer is a Claire, Claire Garland, I believe. She's dot pebbles on Instagram. Um, obviously I made a Siamese cat because I used to have one Uzi, he died several years ago to kidney disease, but you still really miss them. So I thought it was going to be nice to have a little knit cat that could sort of like hang out with me in the sewing room. Um, this is kind of a disaster though. Uh, I've been calling him, his, his christened name is Butterball because his body is really, really fat and just rotund. It looks like a little Butterball turkey. I also had a lot of issues up in the shoulder area. Uh, Claire has a video that, that is attached to the pattern, but like I really couldn't figure out what I was doing with the shoulders. And you can see his paws sort of like do this like turtle sticking out position. So that's not great. Ideally, I would have liked them to be more turned inwards. Um, yeah, but I mean, I enjoyed making him a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun to knit. I liked how it felt like I was sculpting while knitting because there was a lot of like decreases where I could see where oh, decreases and increases where I could see like I was forming these sort of like you know, shapes and stuff. I thought the way that the paws and the tail were done was really, really cool. Um, so I don't regret that I did it, but he just is not, not as good as I wanted him to be. Uh, this pattern also comes with a, a little, a little Fair Isle sweater. So I might knit him the sweater because I think that might cover up some of the issues with the shoulder joint here. And it at least like keep, keep them the legs more in position so I could like sit them down easier but yeah so that's <laughs> this is butterball and then the other thing I did this month in sort of knitting related is I did work on dyeing some of my own yarn um I made made a couple skeins for my mom they're going to be a Christmas present so I don't really want to show you guys now because she watches my videos and she wants to be surprised but I will take a little clip of it before I ship them off to her um and then I'll I'll put them in some future videos after Christmas has, has happened but I really enjoyed doing the like dyeing my own yarn uh, obviously I'm using the same dyes that I was using for dyeing my bra making supplies. So those acid dyes, they are made to work with wool and nylon. So that's why they work for bra making supplies and they work for yarn. Uh, I am using a super wash yarns. I tried it using several of Knit Picks bases. I tried it on um, the Hawthorne base and the Stroll base and the Muse base. Uh, and I don't really have a preference for those. My mom said she prefers the Hawthorne base when knitting because it's less splitty. So that's what I'm going to send her, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I can see myself doing some more for me. I think I'd be really cool to, to dye some sort of like green tonal multi-dimensional variegated yarn. We'll see about that. And then I started knitting on my December projects. So the first one I have is the Holly sweater. Um, so I was looking at my queue and I realized that I have been doing a lot, a lot of color work. Uh, and I only have two more sweaters left on my queue that are color work. So I'm going to go ahead and do them in December. And then next year, I want to focus on more like texture, some cables, some lace, some different stitch patterns. So I think next year I'm going to try <laughs> to not do color work because I really don't want to get like pigeonholed into like one specific thing. I want to, I want to try a lot of things. Uh, so in the spirit of new things, this sweater is worked bottom up. It's the first time I've ever worked a sweater that way. So you do the body and you do the two arms and then you attach them together. And now I'm working on the yoke. So it's an interesting construction method. I am using two drops yarns. I'm using drops air and drops kid silk. So I found after making my silver lining sweater that I absolutely hate doing color work while holding mohair. And I, I swore that I would never do that again. Uh, I forgot that I had already bought the yarn for this. And I had forgot that I hated doing color work with mohair until I got to the color work section. Um, but unfortunately, because I had already knit the body and the sleeves, it wasn't, I, 
I had already did the body and the sleeves with mohair, so it wasn't something that I could just take out. So I needed to continue forging on ahead with the mohair. Um, the first couple of, of rows with <laughs> the color work were awful. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this sweater. Um, I think one of the big problems was just that you have these really large, like 15, 16 stitch floats right here, where I was catching it, having to catch it multiple times and catching with mohair is atrocious but um now i've gotten up into the holly leaves it's been a little bit easier to work on so i think it'll just get easier to go and then knit along so right now you know i'm knitting up up the, the yoke like this so i'm gonna work some decreases in so it's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller so the rounds are gonna get faster and then this is just finished with a large like eight inch um ribbed neck it's like a turtleneck because I want the full cozy effect. Um, this yarn combination I have used before, it's super, super soft. It's really, really nice. I'm using pearl gray and moonstone for the main color. And then I'm using, I think it's like just forest green drops air and dark green drops kids silk in the color work. I think it'll look really nice. This pattern also has some like little French knot red berries that you're supposed to put on after you finish it. I don't think I'm going to put the berries on just because I think that once you add the red berries to it, it becomes definitively Christmas. And then like, you can't really wear it as frequently after December. Um, so I think I might leave the red berries off. Like I said, it's something you do at the very end. So I have time to think about it. And, um, but that's where I'm leaning at this point. Uh, so yeah, you can see on the inside, I've been trying really hard to catch the floats because I knew this section here with, with such long uninterrupted um, main color stitching was going to be much too big of a float that it was gonna you know, catch on my bra straps and stuff like that. So I did it, I hated it. Hopefully it will get better. This is the sweater I'm working on right now. So then the other sweater I wanted to make in December, like I said, it's the last color work sweater on my queue. And this is gonna be another Jennifer Steingast pattern. I believe it's called Winter Soul. Uh, and again, it has some like tree-ish design to it. So I'm gonna be using these three colors of the Iztex Let Lopi. Uh, this is an Icelandic wool yarn. It is single ply, um, a little bit more on the rustic side because there is still like some guard hairs in there. But I really, really enjoy the rust color sweater that I made with this yarn. So I was eager to get another one. Um, I like that the sweater ends up being really, really light, but very warm. So I, I love that combination. And I had seen somebody make the pattern with these three colors in this yarn, but, and I absolutely loved it. So I have a good idea of what it's gonna look like because somebody's already done it. So definitely not my own ideation on this. Yeah, so the three colors that I have here are more, and this middle one is, I think it's called Golden Heather. And then I got, uh, I can't remember what this one is called. Um, the shade name in this is 86. I think it's like light beige or something like that. So those are the three that I'll be using. More will be my main color. And then these are the two like contrast colors that come up into the yoke. And then, as I had said, I have a couple weeks off in the end of November. So if I do get those two sweaters finished, which is highly likely, uh, the last one that I want to tackle this month would be finishing up the last of my Malabrigo yarn. Um, and this is the colorway Hojas. So it's a beautiful sort of like blue and there's some olive green in there and some darker pine green. Um, this one, for sure, for sure, I have to alternate my seams the entire way through the garment. I have learned my lesson. There's no amount of the sweater that I can neglect alternating. Um, but because each of these is so different in terms of like the color, not pooling, but like the, the frequency that the colors are going to happen, that it's going to be much more important that I alternate so that I get, I don't want like like a pool of blue and a blob of green somewhere. So I, I do want to make sure I alternate these. So I have five, in total, I have five skeins um, or hanks. One of these is coming apart. Uh, so you can sort of see how 
it has a lot of different colors in there, those greens and blues. So it would be very easy for this to color pool, which is why I need to make sure to um, be careful how I knit with it. But this is my last set of Malabrigo yarn. It was the one I was most excited for, but the one I was most scared to figure out how to do it. So I think now I have enough practice that I could do this successfully in terms of patterns. I think I might make my own pattern for this. So I want a raglan style. I think I prefer uh, a more, you know, scoop neck stop top or neck to this versus the V-neck. And I want to try to uh, use the stitch count from this sweater so that I get a little bit more closer fitting because I liked how that turned out. Um, so it's going to be scoop neck, raglan, close fitting, and I'm going to do the math so that I can uh, do the pattern for myself because I think that would be kind of fun to just sort of like make my own pattern. I feel like I've been talking forever, so I'm sorry, um, but that is everything I had to share with you guys this month. I hope you guys are having fun for the holidays. You take a little break, spend some time with your family, spend some time for yourself, and I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.